So using Sublime Text 2 as my code editor, this is the basic setup um, of what you'll pick up from that uh, GitHub page. There's a really simple HTML template. There's the um, Python wrapper for, um, for Digital New Zealand, which you don't need to worry about too much. You just need to include it. And we'll be using it um, to simplify a lot of our queries. And then there's the base application, which we haven't done anything with yet. So I'm going to start importing some things in. So from Flask, um, so Flask is a little Python framework for making simple web applications. We'll import Flask. Um, from our PyDNZ module, we'll import the DNZ class. And we'll set up a really simple um, hello world example. So this isn't quite a standard setup for a Flask app. You'll see it differs a little bit if you look at this Flask tutorials. But um, I find it quite useful doing stuff this way if you want to deploy to AppFog. Um, there are a bunch of patterns that you can use though. So this is our first URL pattern. Um, it is if you go to home, then we'll just return hello world. And we'll just tell it to run. And we'll run it in debug mode. Just makes things a bit easier while you're doing development. Now we should be able to run our application. Hopefully it won't. Oop. There we go. And if we go to 12001 by port 500, then we get our hello world. Um, Flask is really neat. You can do some cool stuff with it um, in a really sort of, it's really concise and, and terse. Um, so if we go app root <laughs> and say something like um, name, we can use a variable. So the name and then def show name and the name, we'll pass that variable across. We can return hello and then the name. So now if we visit name slash Chris. Hello Chris. Awesome. Should probably be a comma. There we go. And you note that with debug on we can make changes and they, they automatically echo through. So the next thing that we're going to do is we'll just move that down. Um, instead of um, returning just strings to the to the console, what we really want to do is actually um, return templates, um, so HTML templates, which are um, the the views that we can. Um, mark up with all sorts of interesting layout stuff and UI elements and our search gallery. So we're going to render a template, um, import render template and request from, should be from Flask. So these are some additional little functions and what we'll do is we'll return render template and you see how we've got the search template up here, we'll return it HTML and we'll also because we'll use this a bit later send across search text but it just won't have anything in it so this is our search template um, we'll just add something in here um, just so that we can see what actually comes back so if we go h1 a and this just takes us home um, or digital NZ search. Now when we load home, we see we've actually got a page. We're going to add a little bit more stuff in here. So um, what we'll add 
it next is actually a form. So this is going to be our search box. Oops. Form. And it's going to be posting. We'll add the action later. So that will post. And within the form, there's going to be an input, um, which is type equals text. And the name is going to be search text. And we've actually included up here the Twitter bootstrap um, CSS framework. So that gives us all sorts of um, handy layout, um, sort of takes, takes care of a lot of fiddly stuff um, to do with styling and layout. So we can just focus on getting the code working. Um, the ID is going to be search box. We'll put a placeholder in there, which is um, enter your text. And that will do it for now. So close the form. You can see we've got our search there. We then go um, add a submit button, type equals submit value equals submit, oh, sorry, search class equals, and here are a bunch of um, nice uh, bootstrap classes. It's quite hard to type and talk. Close that, and now we reload the search button. So search for mountain won't do anything. We haven't got anything back yet. So um, what we'll do is going to um, now add our searching to the application. So go into Digital New Zealand, um, I'll remove this key once this tutorial's finished, um, but go in, um, get your API key, grab a key, and then on our main search app, we just want to add that key in. So we'll create this global class called DNZ, um, or oh, global object. Um, and then instantiate it using our, our key. Now what we can do is create a new route, which is called something like search, um, def search. And the search text is going to come from the request that comes in grab it from the form and it's going to be search text. So what the f we're going to do is we'll be putting an action onto this form and it'll find the input which is named search text from that form. So search text um, response will equal dz dot um, search and the query this is where we're using the PyDNZ module will be the search text. Finally, we're going to return, um, well initially let's just return the string that says um, the number of results. So search text, comma, um, response result count. The GitHub page for Pi and DNZ um, gives a lot of information about exactly how the API works. Uh, sorry, how the API wrapper works. So this won't do anything yet because we haven't um, actually added an action to that form. So what we need to do is go into the form and go form 
action equals um, search. Now, if we reload this page and search for mountain, we should see. Hmm. Do we call it something? Oh yeah. <laughs> that should be called search. Reload mountain. Ah, <laughs> we need to actually update the methods for search. So by default, the only methods that you're allowed are, is get. Um, so we want to add post, the HTTP post method. I really hope this one anyway works. Great, so for mountain, there are 298,172 results. For river, there are um, 2 million results. So that's better, but it's still not particularly useful. So the final thing that we're going to do is actually just update our template. So what we'll do is um, instead of returning a string, we'll go back to um, returning a template. So we'll render a template. Um, that template will be search.html. Um, the result count will equal response.result count. You will send across the records. That will be the response records. And the search text will equal the search text. So what we're going to do here is the value of this will equal um, and these curly braces are how we use um, Flask's ginger uh, templating language. So it'll be our search text will go in there. And we'll set up a new gallery and for record in records actually make this a list li and then the record dot title hopefully now when we search we get a whole bunch of river records um, and if we search for Colin McCann ooh, interesting ah because I misspelled his name there we go, some McCann records. Um, the very final thing that we'll do is href equals um, record um, dot source URL. And now when we search for Colin McCann, we should get a whole lot of links through <laughs> to the source institutions. And that's this little tutorial. <laughs>